Good morning. This morning, we are going to take a look at how Paul's letters were received in the early church. And we're going to do that in just a second. Good morning. Welcome to Bible Mornings. I am Greg, and I'm glad that you are with us this morning. Uh, we're going to get started pretty quick here. If you are new to Bible Mornings, this is the end of our Colossians study. We've come a, a long way through Colossians. We're almost done, and we're going to finish with the closing thoughts in the book of Colossians. And we're going to talk a little bit about how the early church received these letters, and what do they do with them, and, and how do they think about them, and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and open to Colossians chapter 4. If you don't have your Bibles and you just want to follow along, you can do that on the screen. That'll work too. So before we get started, though, let's pray together. This is the prayer that we pray every morning as we get going. From the cowardice that dares not face new truth, from the laziness that is contented with half-truth, from the arrogance that thinks it knows all truth, good Lord, deliver us. And now our passage is a long one this morning for us. Uh, this is Colossians 4, starting in verse 7. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, the faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They will tell you about everything here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him, and Jesus, who is called Justice, greets you. These are the only ones of the circumcision among my co-workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epiphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you. He is always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf, so that you may stand mature and fully assured in everything that God wills. For I testify for him that he has worked hard for you, and for those in Laodicea and in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you read also the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you complete the task that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace and peace be with you. All right. Uh, there is a lot in this because we read a huge section, but mostly what I want to catch from this are a couple of quick things. The first thing is how personal the early church is. Sometimes because we're so far away from them and we're so removed in distance that we can lose track of the fact that the church is a community, a family of relationships. And that's true even in the early church, and it's true with Paul, and it's true with all of his friends here that he lists, right? And this is uh, these are people that they would know, right? They're people like that he's just passing on information, um, sharing information. They don't have email. They don't have Twitter or whatever, right? They they get this letter from Paul, and he's updating them on their friends, on their people, on their pastors, on, on people who have worked side by side with them to help grow this church in Colossae, right? And so he gives them this sort of update. And if, if you go through this list of who these people are, this is like a who's who of the early church, especially the early church planting world. There's one highlight here in verse 9. He's coming with Onesimus, and Onesimus is somebody that should set off like a little a little button in our brain that says, wait a second, that guy sounds familiar. He is familiar because he is a runaway slave, and this is going to show up in the book of Philemon, and uh, or Philemon, I don't know how, I, I say it both ways. I'm not sure either one of them is right, uh, but but we might look at that later. Um, but this is, this is uh, Paul's casually throwing him in here to the letter that's going to be read to the whole church right um okay let's that's this first section right that uh we want to catch kind of the relationship piece of what's going on the next piece uh in this next section paul's going to do the same thing right he's going to continue he's going to talk to them about the brothers who are of the circumcision right that he has these these jewish brothers who have joined him on this mission, but he also has these other guys, right? And he says, Epaphras, who is one of you, apparently from their church originally, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you. He is always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf so that you may stand mature and fully assured in everything that God wills. 
if you were looking for a theme in Colossians, this could be it, right? That this this maturity piece, this that you would stand mature and fully assured, that's that's a that's a pretty good theme for Colossians. And it's also this prayer that Epaphras keeps praying for the church here. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's a couple of important characters uh, that we've we've already seen. I want to catch this. We're gonna go one more one more section further, just so you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas, they all give their greetings, right? They all, whatever. But there's also these other churches that we get, right? Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea, right? So this is a church that's close to them provincially, but it's not in their city. Send my greetings to them and to Nympha and the church in her house. There's a lady who own, who has a house and is, is overseeing this house church. And when this letter has been read among you, have it read also in the church of the Laodiceans and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. So this is what Paul's telling them, right? That I've written a bunch of letters, and I've written letters to churches that are close to you. When you finish reading my letter, take whatever you need from it, and then hand it off to them, and then get the letter I wrote to them and read it for you. Uh, This is an important part of early church scripture stuff that we don't talk about very often, and I I don't know why, but it's we, we miss it once in a while. And that is that these letters from Paul are not delivered by like the postal service or whatever. They're delivered by by his disciples, right? They're delivered by, by students of Paul. And so they take these letters and they'll go and read them to the whole church. And then they'll stand and and answer questions, right? They'll, they'll read them and then they'll have a conversation over dinner and they'll explain what Paul really meant, right? This is what I meant to do. This is what, I, this is what Paul really cared about. This is what he wanted you to understand from this. And so even commentary and interpretation was part of, of the the passing on of scripture from the very beginning right? on top of that sometimes we get this notion that the apostles as they were writing these letters never thought anybody else would read them but that's pretty obviously untrue in this passage right that that not only does paul know that the church in Colossae is going to read this letter but he also knows that the church in laodicea is going to read this letter right and and probably other churches too but he for sure knows that right that they're for sure going to swap letters that's a big deal because it means Paul knows he's writing something that's important for the whole church, not just for this one congregation. Um, and so we always have to kind of balance that piece out as we think about it and as we talk about it, is that that in Scripture, this is sort of the way Scripture's passed along and how it comes to be in the first place, right? That, that there is an element of sometimes it's one letter to one person and we just end up having access to it through God's grace or whatever, right? But a lot of these letters are being written to be shared all over the place. They know, Paul knows what he's doing. Peter knows what he's doing. We get these references in other spots, right? So um, the point of that is sometimes when we think of Scripture, I, I don't think we think of it as a community practice or a community of, of commentary, right? But this is what's actually happening in the early church. This is how Scripture is received from the very beginning. And that's that's a challenge for us and it's also something we should be encouraged by it means what we do in bible mornings what we do when we get together for bible studies or when we go to church on sunday like we're part of this ongoing tradition of a community of interpretation it's part of what it means to be the church it's not something we've added on later on that we're like hey it'd be really cool if we could just say scripture means whatever we want that's not really what we're doing right that's not what's going on here um all right that's what i have for you guys this morning Thank you for jumping in on this. Uh, As per usual, I'm super glad you're here. And if you enjoy this at all, please go ahead and subscribe to it. Send it around to your friends. Share it. Uh, This is a really helpful little discipline. It takes 10 minutes every day, sometimes not even 10 minutes. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you can use it. And uh, all right, If, uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. And we will talk to you on Monday when we go back to the Gospel of Luke. We're going to start in on Luke chapter 2.